Hey everyone, it's Nelson Miller here with PA Creative. I'm the creator of the Divi Tabs Maker plugin. And today I'm excited to announce a new update, version 2.0 of the Divi Tabs Maker. So let's take a look at all of these new features. Over on the blog post, we have some information about why we've jumped the 2.0 already. We've just released 1.0 a little over a month ago. And this little paragraph here explains that, you know, we've had tons of ideas and features. And with this list that you're about to see, it's clearly version 2.0 uh, is a huge update with everything that we could possibly think of to make tabs. Um, in Divi. All right, let's take a look at the settings. We're going to go through these one by one. All right, so first of all, display conditions. Now, you may be familiar with this. It's already in the Divi modules, right? You can show or hide a module based on some condition, right? Maybe someone's logged in or out. Maybe it's a certain page or post type, the time of day, and all that kind of thing. But what we didn't have before was conditions for each individual tab. So I'll just show you what I mean here. If I go into the module and then into in the individual tab in the module to the advanced tab, here we have conditions. And I could set some kind of condition here that this tab one only shows based on this criteria, right? And that tab and its content will show or hide based on that. All right, so that's a really exciting update. All right, so here's a small change. Um, we had the active tab pointer in version one. And now we've added a second option. So we're calling it inside and outside. Uh, the original version looked like the um, outside and now we've made the inside. So you can flip it on the inside. So it's just a nice little update. Next, it's how the tabs stack on tablet and phone. And there's a couple options here. So you can see there's a setting for each. So for tablet and for phone. So I'll just go in here and show you that. So right now, um, let me just, actually I'll just use phone. I'll choose um, inline horizontal on phone and keep it on full width vertical on tablet and show you that. A tablet size, it was stacking, right? And then here, when we get to phone size, they go across um, even when they're on a mobile screen. All right, so here's another interesting new feature. On mobile, you can choose to use the tabs as like a menu um, so not, not, not like a regular menu, but the tabs themselves can have a hamburger menu with, you know, it opens and closes and you can choose one. So in here in the settings, there's a new setting display tabs as menu on mobile. And then by the way, there's uh, the mobile menu settings here for the size, the position, um, the color and that kind of thing. All right, so here's how it will look when you come to uh, your mobile device. So there's a hamburger menu here and you can see that there's um, only one tab showing, but you have four tabs. Well, here you can open it up, choose a new tab like that. And it's, it just works as a way of like collapsing the tabs themselves. All right, next we have content height settings. Now this is for the content area of the tabs. So we have the min height, max height and height. And then that what goes right along with that is the scroll bar. So now we can have a scroll bar. So if you have like a max height of, uh, I don't know, 400 pixels for your tab content, because you don't want it to keep going down the page. Now you, it'll, it'll show a scroll bar for the content, because what if your content is a lot longer, right? Your content might be 800 pixels or something. So now you can scroll within the tab content. And then what goes along with that is scroll bar design settings. So you can choose the color and the width. Okay. So again, that's over in the content settings and the design settings. Let's just say I do that 400 pixels uh, and I'll go back and just make this content extra tall. And then in the design settings, I want my scroll bar to be red and I want it to be really thick, we'll say. All right, let's take a look at that. All right, there you can see that my content in here is too tall. So it added the scroll bar. Okay, pretty cool feature. Oh, and here we have 17 more content animations. So what we were just talking about, that content area, um, I think we had around 17, 18 originally, and we've just added a lot more, some zoom effects, bounce effects, flash, pulse, shake, you know, just a bunch of different effects when you click on new tab and the content loads. It's just an animation effect for the content area. 
Now here's a cool one, the vertical and horizontal line. Um, it's just an interesting, cool thing to add. Um, you know, there's, it doesn't actually accomplish a whole lot, but it's, it's kind of cool. So if I go in here and enable it, you'll see what I mean when I, when I spread the tabs out. First of all, you'd have to be able to see the line. Right here, vertical horizontal line, I'm gonna turn that on. Now this will work in horizontal or vertical, okay? So right now, the line is showing, I'm pointing at my screen, um, but the line is showing there. And if I were to switch this to on the left, it's showing over here. Now, we need to uh, also get some space between our tabs, which we'll talk about in the new setting. There you can see the line showing up. And over here, let's see, where is that? All right, here's the line size in the tabs container, which is a new feature, but I can change the color, whatever I want to do with that, okay? You can see that it just adds a nice decoration, that line behind there. And I just mentioned, so I'm gonna skip ahead, the tabs container design setting. So what that is, think of where the, all the tabs are, the actual tabs, not the content, but the tabs themselves. Now we've added a container around those where you could actually make that its own, you know, whatever. Like let's say if I make this red, you'll see it now. And if I added padding, you would really see it, okay? It's what's housing the, the tabs. And this was kind of a, you know, a missing feature really. I mean, I think this is pretty important um, to be able to design that, have that extra design freedom. Um, I've updated some of the demos with this as well. All right, so show or hide element in active and inactive tabs. So what this means is um, you may have your, your tab title and your subtitle and an image or an icon enabled, right? Now what you can actually do is you may only want one of those things to be enabled if it's active. All right, so here I, have, I actually have a title and subtitle on these. So if I go into the tabs or here it says, you know, show active tab title, show active tab subtitle and then image and icon. Let's say I turn that off. Well, there you can see whichever one I click on now, that active tab doesn't have the subtitle. And again, I could do it with the regular tabs. I could turn off the subtitle there instead and only show it on active if I wanted. See that? Kind of interesting how, what you can do, and you can do it with the icon and the title as well. All right, so custom tabs height and width, and that's just how it sounds. So. This is a setting that um, it's a little, it can be a little tricky to use because there's a lot of factors creating the width of, you know, of your tabs and the height. But if you want to hard set them, you, have to, you kind of have to use this carefully. You can turn it on, it's in the tabs toggle. So you can turn it on right here and then see it says tabs height and width now. You would want to use this carefully obviously, but because if you hard code um, the width and height, and then you'd want to make sure it's responsive on the different devices using the settings as well. But it's a setting that's available now because, hey, we wanted to include every possible setting we could. Space in between. I kind of demonstrated this, but it's a really nice new feature. First of all, there's tab spacing, and I can say automatic. But if I say custom, right, which is the default, I can change this slider, and you can see it's it's adjusting the space between. So what you would have had to do before to achieve that would be to add some like margin to the tabs. That's just not the right way to do it. So um, we've added the actual like like think of it as like a gutter between a row. You know, it's like that space between. All right, WooCommerce support. So what does this mean? Well, I'm going to jump over to another website. Here I have a product page. It's just the standard WooCommerce layout, and you may be familiar with the Woo product tabs module. And you can see from this module that it will display the description if I want to, additional information and the reviews. So what if you wanted to do the same thing with our plugin? You could, you just build the tab. So I made a description tab, an additional information tab and a reviews tab. But there's one thing missing and that's the dynamic reviews count. And you know, it's just a small feature, but we're like, hey, we wanna add this, we want we want our module to replace the WooCommerce module. So now I expect you to be using the Divi Tabs Maker on your WooCommerce product pages. Why not? Unlimited freedom in what you can do. So what you'll do, go into the tab, and here's a new toggle that says Show Review Count. It won't work if, if you don't have WooCommerce. Now I'm gonna uh, exit the page and you'll see that it adds it. All right, so here we go, here's my tabs. 
and here's uh, the reviews that you can see it says there's zero reviews, but it's just a little touch that we've added to make it WooCommerce compatible, right? Okay, so here's something. If you were using this, um, the tabs background in the past, which I highly doubt that you did. If you did, note that we've changed it. So it's kind of like a new feature, but it's also, yeah, anyway. So what, what I'm referring to, like you can see here that now I could add a gradient to my tab itself, right? Before what would happen, if you would go into an actual tab here, so if you were to come in here and add a, a gradient, this gradient would have actually appeared in the content. But now in the tab itself, if you come in here and set that, this background here, this gradient and stuff, it will override um, your other settings or at least make sure you don't have any other design settings set for the tab background, okay? Gives you the idea that now you can have a little more creative freedom. Speaking of which, here are some tab shapes. So we're experimenting with this. Um, there's going to be, you know, some minor hiccups with this, but you'll be able to choose from these six right now. Now you will have to adjust the spacing. If you do use these, notice that you can then make sure you adjust the, the margins and paddings, obviously. All right, so we have some important things, and if you didn't notice this, then you may not have been as familiar with version 1. But in version 2.0, we've changed some very, very important things that you need to know about. First of all, terminology. So we used to have it said inactive tabs. Um, we've changed inactive tabs to just tabs in the design tab. It would say inactive tab, active tab. Well, now it's just tabs. And there's a very specific reason we've done that. Um, and that's right here. The tabs settings affects active tabs too now. So what I'm trying to say is that in the past, you had to go in and adjust everything separately for inactive tabs and active tabs. Like, let's say you wanted them to look the same except your background color. You would have had to go in and make them exactly the same in each. Now, you, you don't have to do the same settings twice. You would just go to your tabs, come in here and adjust your, your margins, right, and your paddings, however you want. Your active tab will will inherit those. The only thing that you need to remember about the active tab now is that it will be the same as tabs unless you override it. So watch this, see it? Right now it's the same if I, if I reset a lot of these things, right? Once you override the setting in the active tab, then that takes, you know, priority. So like if I want the background to be blue and, you know, I wanted that to be white, well, then I'd come in here and set it. I hope that's clear. Um, I have some write up here about it, but basically now all you have to do, we've made it a lot simpler, put it that way. Now all you have to do is use the tabs to create your tabs overall settings. And then like, oh, I wanna just change the color or just the border color or just the text color. Well, then you go into the active tab and just choose the settings that you want to change, okay? All right, so we've added the ARIA tags, all right? So now, um, you know, it's in the HTML structure of the module, and it's just better for accessibility, um, and, you know, it meets the W3C requirements, and it's better for SEO crawling, all right? So that's a big thing. A couple of you were asking about that. Make sure we had that. Here's some minor things. I've just added tabs top, content bottom. I think before it just said tabs top, yeah, we just this is just setting updates, minor things, a couple things. I'm not even going to go over this, but overall, I think this is a very big update, and I feel like for the most part, I think we've we've accomplished all the settings that we could possibly need to create tabs. But of course, let me know more feature requests and we'll absolutely develop those. So right now we've literally completed our development list and um, yeah like when we release 1.0 there was still all these items on the list or we've added a few more since but uh, we had to get the plugin released at some point so yeah that's why the quick jump from 1.0 to 2.0 within a little over a month but we really hope you appreciate it and if you do um, give us a review on the product page and let us know um, that you're happy to use our plugin and like again, if you have a feature request, let us know. Or if there's any problem, as always, let us know. All right, well, we'll see you all in our next video.